we'll hear from the ranking member of the subcommittee, our Republican whip, uh, for his opening statement. Mr. Thu. Thank you, Chairman Lujan, for holding what I think is a very timely hearing. Um, in 22 legislative calendar days, the FCC's authority to conduct spectrum auction expires. And yet the last time this committee held any hearings related to spectrum management was in July 2020 when I was serving as the chairman of the subcommittee. So while I have been disappointed in the lack of progress on this issue, I hope moving forward we can work collaboratively. We all know that spectrum is the lifeblood of wireless communications. Next generation networks require efficient and effective use of low, mid, and high bands of spectrum. And in the global race, we deploy, to deploy these networks and services, proper management of this limited resource has never been more important. It's particularly important for those of us in more rural parts of the country. If inadequacy of spectrum resources makes 5G less viable, it will be the rural areas where it no longer makes sense to deploy next generation telecommunications services. Last week, the FCC took an important step in bringing 5G services to more rural and tribal areas by beginning the auction of the 2.5 gigahertz band. It is my view that Congress should provide a short-term extension of the FCC's auction authority so that we can ensure this auction continues and is completed without any delays. At the same time, I believe it is equally important for Congress to build upon the success of the Mobile Now Act and Beat China for 5G Act by developing legislation to keep spectrum in the pipeline. One such place to start would be legislation Chair Lujan and I introduced earlier this year. The Spectrum Innovation Act would free up prime mid-band spectrum in the lower three gigahertz band, allowing the spectrum to be auctioned for mobile services. By enacting a pipeline bill, Congress provides regulatory certainty and predictability. And when that spectrum is made available, it is essential that there are clear rules and recognized rights for spectrum users. It is important to note a spectrum pipeline bill will take some time. It will require government agencies, industry, and other groups competing for this resource to come together. But by doing so, we can make spectrum decisions in the interests of our economic and national security. Having led the efforts of the Mobile Now Act, I know firsthand the complexity of this issue and the time it takes to work with stakeholders on spectrum legislation. And Mobile Now didn't involve general auction authority. The last time that Congress extended the FCC's general auction authority was back in 2012. At that time, Congress provided the FCC with specific direction on the bans that should be considered for auction. But it also took years to get there. Some of the spectrum bans were identified in the FCC's national broadband plan two years earlier, some the subject of multiple congressional hearings in the two years leading to its passage, and some included in studies and reports by NTIA and the FCC's Office of Engineering and Technology in the years before we extended auction authority. It is my hope that this committee can work together in a bipartisan manner to develop a larger spectrum package. Sound spectrum management also requires proper coordination between NTIA, the FCC, and other affected federal agencies. I was pleased to see the FCC and NTIA reach an agreement to update its spectrum coordination processes. It's important that this is done regularly, and so I'd encourage this committee to advance the Improving Spectrum Coordination Act, which is legislation I've sponsored with Ranking Member Wicker and Senators Lujan and Blackburn. And as more and more Americans rely on co connectivity like Wi-Fi, we must also recognize the critical role unlicensed spectrum plays in the communications landscape. Unlicensed spectrum is responsible for transmitting a significant amount of the data in our networks and will play a tremendous role in the development of the Internet of Things. Finally, as we work towards freeing up additional licensed and unlicensed, unlicensed spectrum, we must also take action to remove barriers to large-scale 5G deployment. My Streamline Act, for example, would expedite the deployment of the small cells needed for 5G installation while respecting the role of state and local governments in making deployment decisions. And importantly, it would make it more affordable to bring 5G to rural areas by addressing the cost of small cell deployment. So, Mr. Chairman, I look forward to discussing all of these issues with our panelists today and appreciate all of you being here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thune, and appreciate your work on this issue as well, not just in this Senate, but uh, in previous years as well.